You like screens, right? Nowadays, even your screen has a flashlight. You might have thought, when would screen technology come to flashlights? Or maybe you haven't, and that just sounds ridiculous, like a luxury pickup. Either way, flashlight manufacturer Immolent has introduced a new light called the SA-04, which adds space-age touchscreen technology to flashlights. While most companies would be happy with coasting on hybrid screen flashlight technology and never introducing another product ever, Immolent decided that wasn't good enough for one light and created the first variable color temperature light with red, green, blue output and a touchscreen. And all of it runs off of four AA batteries and not Dragon Tears. It's covered in a scratch resistant type 3 anodization and constructed out of aerospace grade aluminum because beer can grade aluminum wasn't quite fancy enough. All those LEDs are protected by a clear tempered glass lens and operated by two electronic switches and a resistive touch screen. Resistive touch means it's more like touch screen technology found in GPS and fast food chain cash registers everywhere and not the technology found in the smartphone you have your face buried in all the time. Since your mind is probably blown by now, let me slow it down a bit and do some flashlight describing. What comes in the package? Well, your flashlight basics. The light, a manual, a holster, spare o-rings, and a screen protector. Alright, moving on. First up, how about the LEDs? The main source of light comes from the two LEDs. One a cool white XML2 and the other a warm white tinted regular old XML. Additionally, there are two tri-colored red, green, blue LEDs, because why not? Alright, so how does one control all of these lights? And why are there so many? Well, I have the answer to one of those questions. First, the unique thing about this light is the ability to adjust the color temperature of the white light, which is why there are two LEDs up front. Using a combination of touchscreen and buttons, you can adjust the color temperature of the light by changing the intensity of the two LEDs relative to one another. So a warmer light means more light is coming from the XML. A cooler light output means more is coming from the XML too. And a more neutral tint means that an equal amount of light comes from both. Got it? Alright, so let's operate this thing. Remember the SA4 has two buttons on the underside and a touch screen up top. One button is called the mode button and it has an M on it. And the other one is the power switch and it's got that power symbol on it. Alright, so turn it on by pressing the power button, which is the button furthest from the lens. A quick press turns it on and off. You'll see the screen has a battery indicator in the middle, a series of bars, and a mode selection. You know, not to be confused with the mode button on the underside of the light. Okay, actually it may confuse you. So let's adjust the brightness. Use your thumb to dim and brighten the light's overall output. I guess you could use a finger if you want to, but it's easier to use a thumb. I'm not here to boss you around. More bars means it's brighter, less bars means it's dimmer. Immolent says low is 1 lumen and high is 930 lumens. Okay, let's adjust the color temperature. With the light on, press and hold the power button for half a second and your color temperature adjustment mode comes up. Less bars or down is warmer and more bars or up is cooler. Neutral is about the center. Cool. Now you can escape this by pressing the power button for half a second. Now you're back in brightness adjust on the touchscreen. Whatever color temperature you decided upon is now fully adjustable. The main output mode has color temperature memory, so those settings are saved when you turn it off and turn it back on again later. One thing to note, the screen will turn off after about 30 seconds automatically. To get it back, just quickly tap the mode button underneath. Quick presses toggle the screen on and off. Okay, so how about the color modes? On the screen, press and hold the mode area on the screen. Half second presses change between the color modes. You have red, then green, then blue, and police car felony red and blue strobe mode. One more press gets you back to regular old flashlight mode. Or you can just turn it off because the colored RGBs are not memorized when you turn the light off. Also, they are not dimmable either. Sorry, life is just a series of disappointments. And for you strobe watchers out there, you probably thought there was a serious lack of white light strobe modes in this light. 
well, first off, you're crazy. And second, you're right. Because you have three strobe mode outputs in addition to felony mode, red and blue strobe. And if you thought you were already excited, the white light modes are completely dimmable. All right, all right, so hurry up and show you how to find them already. First, turn on the light again. Then hold the mode button underneath for half a second. First you get freak out strobe. Another half second press gets you to beacon strobe. And a third half press gets you to SOS. Another half second press gets you to regular flashlight mode or you can just turn it off because the strobes are not saved into memory, no matter how much you wish they could be. The white strobe modes are fully dimmable and you can control the color temperature as well, so I guess that's cool. Another thing to note, all mode memory in standard flashlight mode is erased when you remove the tail cap. Okay, so how about a runtime test? Since there's nearly a billion ways to adjust the output, and I'm literally not exaggerating. I did the runtime test in the default highest output with a neutral color temperature. This is the default mode the LED flashlight turns on in after you've replaced the tail cap. So it makes the most sense. I use a time lapse feature on my camera and all the settings are manual. The clock in the frame shows you the time of day. The light runs for about an hour and 27 minutes before going dark. You'll see it begins to drop in brightness significantly for the last 15 minutes of runtime. The low battery indicator flashes when you have about 15 minutes of battery remaining. Okay, how about a few beam shots? Between other similar 700 to 1000 lumen range lights first, then followed by four bigger lights pumping out roughly three times as many lumens. The big flashlights are all in the 2000 to 4000 manufacturer rated lumen range. My camera was set to manual during this test. You'll see the camera settings on each different beam shot and the distance in feet all lights in the test were set to their maximum output because that's how flashlight science works. You'll see the name of the light at the top of the screen and how many LEDs it has if it uses more than one. The SA04, because of the multi-LED design and smaller reflector, doesn't throw as well in some of the extreme tests, but that's to be expected because of the reflector size. Anyway, you may recognize part of this from my other Immolent video. Sorry about that, but hey. What else is there to know about the light? Well, first I recommend putting on the screen protector to uh, protect the screen. Oh, and make you instantly more attractive. Okay, one of those is a lie. The light is waterproof to IPX8 standards, so dropping it in shallow water or using it in the rain or weird satanic rituals ain't no thing. You'll definitely need to use the lockout feature when not using it because from personal experience, the light is super easy to inadvertently turn on. To do this, Press and hold both bottom buttons at the same time. The quick strobe mode. The quick the quick strobe means it can't be turned back on until you unlike it. Unlike it. Unlock it by doing the exact same thing. Time for a social media blackout. What about a few opinions? First off, the tail cap is anodized, so the threads will last a long time. If you use it a lot. There is no voltage lockout feature on the light, so if you don't use the light for extended periods of time, Take out the batteries. It even says so in the manual. The light doesn't employ PWM on any mode, or at least it was not detectable to my eyes or the camera. Video cameras are sensitive to PWM, and you will have to adjust your shutter speed to compensate, so the light doesn't look like it's flickering. The touch screen can be a bit more precise, and after you set your output, I recommend toggling the screen off just so you don't accidentally adjust the brightness. Remember, you can turn the screen off by clicking the mode button briefly. The low mode on the light is pretty low, not quite as low as my Sunway Man V11R, 
or the Army Tech Tierra A1 Pro, but not everyone gives an F about moonlight modes, so there's that. The SAO4 is an advanced light and a perfect gift for someone who's always complained flashlights were for cretins because they didn't have enough features. Wait, why would you give a jerk who says stuff like that a gift? Anyway, check out my channel for a ton of other flashlight and headlamp reviews because right now that's all I do. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. And feel free to comment, ask questions, or try to snarky one-liner in the comments below the video or talk about politics. I'm just kidding, please do not talk about politics. This light was provided for review by Emelint. Thanks for watching.